Hello, everybody. Okay. Welcome to Rat Sound Review. This is album versus album. Hello. 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 <laughs> Can't believe you guys got on board with You like a lot of cheesy stuff. I, I can't even say that because I like some cheesy stuff too. That's one of the best songs on this record. But I was forced to listen to the debut for this album's album. And I was impressed. I feel like the title track is a little weak, honestly. Am I going to get crucified for saying this? Yeah. Nope. Please get me off this fucking program. <laughs> All right. Let's start the show. Welcome to let's Alvarez Album. What's up, Matt? Matt Schaffer? What's, What's going on, guys? How are we doing? Hey. Doing all right. Hey, pretty good. All right. Well, thanks for having me on. I appreciate it on your illustrious show here on the Rat Salad Review. I, I feel a little uh, underdressed here. Everyone's wearing fucking sunglasses or just regular glasses. <laughs> I'm just fucking chilling over here with my oh. KWO shirt, which you can get at ProWrestlingTees.com slash Steve Richards. But, you know, thanks for having me on, guys. <laughs> no, no problem. We enjoy having you on here. We haven't had you on yet. No, no like one, of the, one of the few people we haven't had on. Um, this we is got like close. a episode. We got close. <laughs> yeah, we did good. Well, let's not go there. You got what? I'm sorry, <laughs> what was that? <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Uh, if anybody recognizes uh, Matthew's voice, that's because he did the voiceover on our High Mean Media Group uh, advertisement. Did a very good job on that. Oh, I appreciate it. I had some fun with that. You know, like I, uh, I've had the ability to like when I started with music itself, I was just I was like a roadie for a metal band for my best friend's dad's metal band. Uh, right. They're called Saint Madness, which I think yeah. you guys have like at least been heard of now. So yeah. like, yeah, yeah. So like, I started off just you know. You know, setting up full stacks and shit and fucking metal band full stacks are ridiculous compared to a reggae fucking just little setup. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, so you fucking like just do it. And then eventually they were like, you know what? You're good at talking. We should just put you on the merch table. I was like, fuck yeah. I don't want to have to lug shit around anymore. <laughs> <laughs> that's and cool. Then I so. moved up there from there. So that's how I started my metal connection, my metal music, just being part of that family band mm. atmosphere. You know what I mean? Plus, like, dude, when you're like at a metal concert and like some chick is walking around with her tits painted, and you're like, right. "What kind of genre am I playing in?" Right? You, know? <laughs> you don't see that much in uh, reggae concerts, do you? No. No. All right. Well, Very cool. So, you want to give us all. a little bit dance? What? Dance all you see a lot of funky shit going on. That's true. You would probably see a lot of grinding. That is for sure. Yeah, probably. And Greg is frozen again. Greg's got to use his computer tonight. Sorry, everybody. Greg's phone is... Uh, we fucked Greg's it's phone up. <laughs> much porn? I don't look frozen to me. No, no you're freezing. Uh, no, he, he's got to keep his phone plugged in because he's got a shitty battery. Okay. No, I, I left it plugged in too long. I fucked up the screen. Yeah, whatever you're saying. Nobody knows what you're saying. <laughs> awesome. All right, Matthew. Tell me about this album versus album. How do we do this, guys? Actually, you tell me about it because these are your picks this week. We let our special guest pick the albums that we're going to listen to tonight. Well, I picked and... the album, but how, how do we break this down? How, what are the rules? How do you win? How, how does the album get chosen? There I'm are no rules. Time over these choices here, I'm telling you. There are no I'm rules. I beat myself up. I'm like, I fucking love these albums. How, how am I going to choose? <laughs> so is there some book, of... and then we rate them from 1 to 10 at the end. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, okay. We should we should have went over that beforehand, but hey, it's all right. That's Let all people right. know our secrets. That's fine. So, Earth Crisis, of course, by Steel Pulse, is uh, one of the first reggae albums I listened to growing up as a kid. Um, one of the first ones I listened to too. <laughs> it's, it's okay. Yeah, I just happen to be like I grew up in Southern California in a cluster and a melting pot of different friends and groups. And one day I was just over at my friend's house. His parents were playing this music. And I was like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> so, like, I sat down and just started chilling and vibing, you know what I mean? You know, and I wasn't really into the weed shit yet, but maybe that was my first, like, you know, glimpse into that lifestyle and atmosphere. It wasn't until, like, around the age of 16 when my friends got me high for the first time. And I, that's, a, that's a story in itself. Uh, <laughs> but the album, you know, from top to bottom here, Earth Crisis, I believe, is one of Steel Pulse's finest masterpieces. I mean, it starts off with that... 
first song stepping out like mm-hmm. and like where they're talking about the literal sense of them actually playing music you know i can grant you anything i wish but you know right now you're gonna fucking get this music motherfucker so like <laughs> they come out hard with it right and then yeah. of course by the time you get to you know through tightrope and then you get into um uh of course, Roller Skates, which is one of their most famous reggae songs. If anybody's listened to a reggae radio station or have you gone to a reggae concert, somebody either covers it or it's been played, right? It's one of the most oh, famous yeah. reggae songs, I would say, in our genre, at least in this time frame now. And oh. that also is in part to the fact that Still Pulse is still going. They're still playing, right? They're oh, actually really? light here. Oh, yeah. In fact, um, I want to say in a couple of weeks, my one of my good friends, Jordan Armijo, shout out to his band Red Sage. Check them out out of Colorado. They're opening up for Steel Pulse in Colorado. Oh, so, wow, cool. Um, yeah, so like I've toured and played with that kid around when I was playing my my doing my reggae music thing. So, nice. you know, I, I've always had a big love for this band for Steel Pulse. You know, I, where what is are Steel you Pulse guys? from? Um, you know, I, I should know this. You should. But I, I should know this, <laughs> but you know, I. I want to say they're British. British. <laughs> what? what? Yeah, I know they're British. That, that's why I don't want to. Like, I don't want to. Uh, oh. Hold on, somebody, Greg, you're feeding back like real bad. I didn't want to say like the specific like area. I knew they were from like the United Kingdom area. Like they're from like either Birmingham or something like that. But so like, they're, so they're not even from the islands. <laughs> they're fake. <laughs> well, like they. <laughs> why am I wearing these threads? There's a, there a huge, huge roots reggae uh, yeah. scene in in the late '70s, early '80s. It's yeah. still there, but I mean, it was it was uh, huge, and then Two Tone came along, and that kind of stole some of their thunder. But I mean, essentially, they ended up traveling and living and working in the islands itself, and you know that's oh, where nice. they had formed and found this you know musical genre itself. Right. So, right. like, it's you know they're of course the original singer itself, and, and you know leadist of the band. They're you know they're from. He's from Birmingham, right? They all assembled there and like set up with what MCA Records or Island Records. I don't know. There's all these different record companies back then, bro. Right. Of course. <laughs> um, but like, I, I know that like David Hines, who does vocals, he did it from like 1975 to now. He's the original, right? Uh, you've got Salem Brown, who does keyboards, um, Sydney Mills, and then uh, Clifford Pousset, Jerry Jeffrey Johnson. So. There's a lot of like guys that have been there. Everybody there. In fact, most of the people, except for like the drummer and like some of the backing vocals, who have still been there for like the last 15 years, have all been there since the early 70s, 80s. The original core four, you know what I mean? Oh, wow. So like that's like a monument and task into itself. From nominations of Grammys, you know, to traveling worldwide, yeah. multiple, you know, thousands of records sold. You can't go wrong with Steel Pulse if you want to get into reggae music. They they provide a lot of classic. Uh, roots reggae music, a lot of with up tempo beats and uh, you know good me- me- good melodies, good melodic lines. Mm. You know, yeah. In my opinion hey. itself. Not too. You know, you want to go next, sex? Yeah, I would throw right, uh, Black Uhuru in there too. They're, that's that's good. another band, uh, very Steel Pulse like. Um, I've yes, loved this album me. since I was Dinner, a kid too. Naughty dreadlocks. <laughs> I, o- I open. I open. She's coming to dinner. In St. Louis, Missouri, opened up for Black Uhuri. I got to hang out Is with. Is that right? Michael Rose. It's pretty good. Pretty uh-huh. good. Man. Yeah, yeah, that'd be awesome. No, no, no Sly and Robbie, but hey, you know that's okay. Right on. <laughs> Sly Dunbar and Robbie. Uh, what's Robbie's last name? I don't know, man. I just know Sly oh. and Robbie. That's all. I, nah, that's all I need to know. All right. <laughs> uh, as far as the Steel Pulse album goes, yeah, it's one of the best. Um, I've I've loved it since I was a kid. Oh, okay. I'm 50 now, so I've I've I saw it come and go, but uh, it's in it's in my rotation. Um, I like State of Emergency. Maybe not as much, but okay. that's another great Steel Pulse. That's a good album. album. That's a good album. Yeah, yeah. Steel um, Pulse has got a lot of bangers out there. Right, yeah. yeah. Roller Skates is a, an all-time classic uh, Roots reggae song. Uh, it could go on any greatest uh, Roots reggae compilation. It should. It deserves to be there. Uh, if um, it's not already there, right? Right, right on. I mean, uh, what else is on here? Oh, I mean, uh, the Wild Goose Chase is on this song, Tightrope, on this album. 
Wild Goose Chase. Do you have uh, the dub? Do uh, you got the dub versions on your on your version? Do I have versions of roller skates and uh, what else? I do. I do have dub versions of that. Yeah. No, I, I don't count dub versions, so I didn't listen to those. Well, yeah, you gotta. I mean, I listened to them afterwards, but yeah, but I don't know. I... I mean, I'm the same way with my own music. Like, if they have, like, demos or dub versions or remixes or whatever, I, uh, I'd rather hear just the originals. No, that's you know? true. That's true. I don't know I why. heard a dub. I heard, like, a remix version of of Stepping Out on the radio with, with I don't know who it was. And I, I mean, they were famous reggae artists, too. I can't remember right now. And I was just like, eh, it's not as good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no. They, the original is on there for a reason. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Oh, for sure. For sure. Yeah. Anything else you guys like to talk about, Steel Pulse? Yeah, well, I didn't get my turn yet, Matthew. Oh, go ahead. Stop rushing me, will you? Sorry. This is my show. Well, our show. <laughs> it's your show. You can do whatever you want. <laughs> That's right. All right. All right. Um, yeah, I wonder where that came from. Yeah. That sounds very familiar. I do that on my show. On my <laughs> yeah, intro. I, I know. <laughs> oh, Fallout, check it out. I, I listened to it. it. I listened to it today, actually. Yeah, what do you think? It's pretty good. Uh, oh, damn, what were you talking about? Um, oh, I wanted to ask you something about it, too. Clones? Were you talking about clones yeah. today? Yeah, yes. bro. Clones, bro. Yeah. Crazy shit, huh? I'm telling you, it's happening. Like, they're already cloning animals, so why is it not crazy? If they're not going to try to clone humans. Yeah. I wish I would have cloned my cat. I love my cat. Didn't know. Like, all I'm saying is if I can get my own clone to get famous and do all the work for me, I'm totally down. But, like, that's <laughs> That's true. That's all. Who who else? You know, why? What other reason would you need a clone? You know, you just sit back and relax and let him do all the work and play games and watch wrestling all day. You know, can't get a better life than that. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> all right. Well, this uh, like I said before, this album is new to me. I don't like. I, well, I'm not gonna say I don't like reggae, but I've never really listened to reggae before. I, obviously, I've heard Bob Marley and all that crap. But uh, the funny thing is, I knew this album because when I saw the album cover. What you Bob Marley and all that crap? Yeah. Come on. Actually, because of you, Matthew, at work, we listened to Bob Marley today. Oh, really? Yeah, because I've been oh. listening to Steel Pulse and uh, what, what's the other guy? Ayatara? We've been listening yeah. to that uh, on an awful week. I've been making them listen to it. Well, that's smart. I'm proud of you. Yeah, so they've been kind of, they kind of got into it a little bit, and then they had to put Bob Marley on today. So. Well, that's fine. Bob Marley is a classic. Yeah, you can't no, go wrong. Yeah, exactly. But uh, I knew the album, this uh, Steel Pulse album, because they always used to mix up, because uh, the band, t- the album title is called Earth Crisis. And Earth there's a, Crisis. Yeah. And there's a metal band called Earth Crisis. So when I would search in the metal section of the CDs, they would stick this album in with there. And I guess somebody thought that there was, this, you know, the metal band. Which you can tell by the album cover, it's, it doesn't look anything like a metal band's album cover. <laughs> no, I could I, I could actually send it to you. Like right now, I was over at my buddy Darren's house. Uh, shout out to him. He's a reggae musician. His favorite band is Steel Pulse. And like at his house, like framed is a copy of Earth Crisis on vinyl, signed by all of them. Like oh, so, awesome. he's he's a huge, you know, huge. That's awesome. Mark for it as well. Yeah, that's so. cool. Yeah. Really cool. Well, I do like I do like this album. I, it's pretty cool. Okay. You know, okay. I'm not against it at all. I, I listened to at first listen though, I was like, I don't know if I can keep listening to this. Second listen, I'm like, all right, I'm getting it a little bit more now. So I end up liking Stepping Out, Throne of Gold, Earth Crisis, Bodyguard, even though it's got some corny lyrics. <laughs> and, well, uh, think about the time when it was written as well. Right. You know, exactly. and you also plus you do also there's also a thing called Lovers Rock. Steel Pulse had to make sure they were appealing that to that genre as well. Right. Yeah. So. And I get but, that love baby music, man. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the other songs are okay. You know, just a little hard to pick one song from the other because a lot of times it's a very, very similar, you know. But, um, well, I mean, you, you got to, in reggae, I think in general, it's very similar. But I think right. music, you can make that argument about any type of style right. of music. I can hear, yeah. I hear a lot of metal bands and I'm like, well, that, that track sounded just like the other track. Yeah, so, yeah. You know, uh, it's I mean, true. It's with every band, really. Once so you hear know, a lot of your reason, sound, you know what I mean? Right, exactly. For some reason, I don't know, reggae always has a certain sound. Mm. And, you know, you know, you know. Oh, yeah. It's definitely like a, an up-tempo that... Uh, the cow. The cow. The, right. The, yeah. That and it's, always, all, it's all in the upstroke instead of the downstroke. Yeah, right. the cow. The cow. The cow. 
And it's, <laughs> you did it very well. I know. I've been playing for a long time. Hopefully. I might have to, I might have to uh, sample that clip and use it on the show every once in a while. <laughs> I learned that from my buddy who did that for me one day. And I was like, oh, when he was teaching me how to play reggae, I was like, how do I do the, the thing? And he was like, the cow. And I was like, what? I was like, he's like, cow. He's like, you're, you're down and then you're upstrung. And I was like, oh, okay. And once you get it, then it's like really easy because then you're just like chucking. Dip, yeah. dip. Do you do, know how to do, play do, guitar too? Because I know you play keyboards, right? I do. Pl- I know how to play guitar. That's actually what I started with. I started playing okay. guitar in 09. Um, and then my buddy was like, dude, you type 80 words a minute. You should play keys. So I learned to play keys. But um, I just still play with my guitar. You know, it's not like I, I don't consider myself a good guitarist, but like I can walk into a room with people who don't aren't music, musicians and be like, wow, you know how to play guitar. Right. You know what I mean? <laughs> Wow, you can sing! And I'm like, yeah, you know, whatever. It's not good. <laughs> you think it's good because you're drunk and I'm keeping key, but that's fine. That's all that matters. <laughs> Greg, are you there? Greg? Greg's not here. I see his name Greg up on the his... thing. Yeah, I think he left. The GN Network. <laughs> <laughs> dum, dum, dum. You should, that's right. you should start. He should. I am trying to get him to do another podcast, so maybe. All right, so cool. I like to steal Pulse. All right, all right. All right, so next, Ayaterra. Give us some background on that guy. So Ayaterra is a collective. It's a group, right? Mm-hmm. It's made up of about four or five guys. They're based out of SoCal. I actually, I know these guys. Oh, okay. I've played with these guys. I've opened up with these guys. So I'm a little, I would say, biased to this band, too. This has been a very hard choice in putting, <laughs> and, and lining up these albums versus each other because, of course, I've got my OG, Steel Pulse, but then I've got this band that, like, not only have I met, but they continue to pump out really good music. And I'm just like, oh, it's really good. It's really conscious type music as well. But then there's also some stuff about just, like, smoking weed and having a good time, bro. And, like, I like that kind of, like, lifestyle as well because – I've lived that lifestyle, so <laughs> I've identified with that, you know. And yeah. they're they're living their dreams now, as far as you know, playing national tours. And so I would say, if you looked at them like from a wrestling perspective, uh, on the touring scale right now, they would be on like they're just moving from the undercard to the middle card right now. Oh. Like now they're just starting to host their own national tours and take bands with them where they just got done grinding for the last couple of years as being the openers for other bands. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? So like, and they've got a really good management behind them, but this album top to bottom is a banger, dude, especially bless up, um, bless it up. Like that's like, that's like, that's like my fucking jam on a daily basis. <laughs> like I play that jam and I just get fucking pumped and shit. Cause everybody in that album, I know who sings on that. I'm Kareem Israel. He's the lead singer of a rise roots from California. His dad's a very famous uh, musician. Um, so like he, like he's just got a really good background. Great, great person. So like a lot of people I've met in the reggae scene, as far as music I listen to, they're great people. Like I try right. not to associate with like those musicians who are just being fake, right. you know, or like the white boy reggae. Like, don't get me wrong. There's some white boy reggae tracks out that I do like. They're pretty good. They're good. It's like they're good in the gym. And you're like, OK, that's cool. These someone listening to my reggae pop instead of that other bullshit pop. Right. <laughs> so, like, I'm OK with that. I like some dirty heads. That's probably I'd say the biggest poppy like reggae band out there right now. They're okay. probably more mainstream. You probably if you heard a, a dirty head song, you would probably hear that stand tall, stand tall. It gets a little better. I see the wall that we can break down together. You know, that kind of music. <laughs> Boy, I didn't know we were going to have singing on the show today. Damn. That's how it gets a little better. Anyway, sorry. You need to come on more often. Sorry. Oh, yeah, you should, uh, you should uh, do some of uh, your Big Mountain impersonation. Oh, I don't want to do that. No? I don't, <laughs> don't want to disrespect them. I, I actually knew that I know the drummer. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> Timothy Pacheo. Uh, I played with Zig Mountain, so like he has his own band now, Sidecar. They're based out of San Diego. Yeah, so. that sounds familiar. I got I we did with him in the back of a van. It was really cool. <laughs> like we rolled up on tour, and I was like, "Holy shit, it's Big Mountain!" <laughs> I was like, <laughs> oh, yeah, we'll "Talk to them." So like we went and talked to them, and they're like, "Yeah, you you, you want to smoke?" We were like, "Yeah." And then like we just all piled into the back of the van and just smoked. And then I asked stupid questions like a young musician would, you know, shut yeah. my mouth and then smoked weed. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's what, what, was the, what was the biggest band you played with? Um, well, for you, for me, for me yeah. personally, the best person I've ever played with, and I still like talk to them and follow them, is Josh Heinrichs and Skill and Jaw. 
they're based out of Missouri. Um, I've been following them since they were in a band called Jaw Roots. Just two white guys, but like one can like really sing, and then one is like another one who can like rap, like okay. you know, dance all rap, if you will. Um, so that's probably one of my favorites as far as biggest on a national scale or global scale. I've actually played with some uh, band out of um, New Zealand. I forget what their name is, but they're fucking huge, man. Like like panty dropper type huge. You know what I mean? <laughs> like girls love these. They're like they, we open up for a festival. It's actually on my jacket here. Let me see. Um, I have it right here. Uh, Spawn Breezy. They're big. Uh, Rebel Soldiers is huge. They're from like uh, New Zealand. Both these uh, bands are from New Zealand and Hawaii. House of Shem is huge. They were uh, one of the guys he played with uh, the original Bob Marley band back in the day. Oh, wow. um, and and uh, Clinton Fearon, he was part of the Gladiators. I've gotten to play with him a couple times. Gotten to hang out with him. He's pretty nice. So as far as re- reggae ones, those are those are big, you know. I guess awesome. if you will. <laughs> I mean, I've I've opened up for other artists that went on to be big, but you know that's not. I don't. They're like white boy reggae bro, so you know. Not really worth that shit. <laughs> <laughs> Screw those white boy reggae boys. I mean, I'm yeah. not talking about like bad. I mean, there's a good. There's some good white boy reggae out there that own that shit. Like bumping uglies from Maryland. Like they they own that shit. They're like we are white boy reggae, and that yeah. I respect. Because then they don't try to be like blah blah reggae. I'm white. And, you know, they're not trying to do that shit. <laughs> they're just like, nah, Ooh, yeah. dude, they're, like they're like, nah, bro, we're fucking white boy reggae. I'm like, all right, get it, dude. Like, <laughs> respect. <laughs> like. <laughs> You're not pretending to be something you're not. So like that I can respect. But like all the people that are just like a slightly stupid, like some people criticize them because some of the singers in the past have sounded like that, you know. So the man who don't be in him no more. You can't be wise, man. But the man who don't be him no more. He can't tell it that done. You want it. Don't go by him now. You want it. Man, I, I mean, don't get me wrong. People like them. I, I don't really like that band. So, And I don't play reggae anymore, so now I can be honest. <laughs> like, if I was in the reggae scene, I couldn't talk shit. I'd be like, oh, yeah, they're a good band. Fuck yeah. But now I'm just like, whatever. Like, <laughs> That is true. That is one thing when you're in a band, you can't really say too much until you're done. No, I've met a lot of dickheads I'm, in my life. <laughs> I'm doing wrestling now and stuff like that. Yo, I'll, I'll go Ben Hameen. Yeah. So, you know. How did you get involved with the with them? With the homie? We're going way off topic here, but yeah. yeah, no. Um, so like it's I was just initially like talking with a couple of them in the discussion group on, at WrestleZone mm-hmm. because I was listening to the show. So like one day, like this is weird, man. Like I was with WrestleZone before they were WrestleZone. So like I was visiting the site when it was called backstagewrestling.com when I was in high school. And then this backstage wrestling got bought out and turned into WrestleZone. So then I'm watch, I'm following WrestleZone now. And then all of a sudden, WrestleZone one day starts doing radio. And I'm like, oh, okay, cool. Well, I already listened to a couple of the radio things, but these guys are doing it every day. Sweet. So I'm listening to them. And then one day, Ben Hameen comes on the radio, dude. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, what the fuck have I been listening to? Like, what the hell? <laughs> Like, why do I care what this Dave Meltzer guy says? And why do I care what this other guy says when this wrestler guy actually knows what the fuck he's talking about? I was like, dude, you're a fucking idiot. You've acted like you should know how to fucking look at this shit. And this guy just fucking dick slaps you in the face with information, right? (laughs) So, like, I just started, like, honestly, just, like, supporting their Twitter and just, like, retweeting out a bunch of shit. I bought a couple T-shirts. And then, like, one day, Rick Vickery asked me to host their Twitter, like, just doing their Twitter stuff. That's how I got in. And I wouldn't say like I pre-calculated it, but I will say there were times where I was like, you know, if I did this, this could help me get to here and this could help yeah, me get yeah, to yeah. here. And then eventually one day I was like, you know what? I went out and I bought like a thousand dollars worth of equipment mm. for like podcasting and editing shit, taught myself how to do it. And then I started putting myself through school. And I think that's when they kind of started to take a little bit notice of me. And they're like, okay, this guy's serious. Yeah. Yeah. All right, <laughs> you cool know? story. So, yeah, there you go. And that's when you got to take over Big Ray's show for a while and. Right, well, I don't, you know, I, I and don't uh, and uh, well, and now you, uh, now you almost own the network. You got like three shows going on over there. I right? do not own the network. Don't ever say that. <laughs> I am a nobody. 
I am. I will say that like the only show that is mine is the Fusion Fallout. I produced that one. Yeah. The Impact Attack. I am privileged to be a part of with Ben Hamin, Yolo, and our new returning co-host Joe Jansen. And then now I get to produce the AEW show, which is going on right now as we're recording. So right. uh, I'm watching that in the background. Um, oh, but my, my phone yeah. went off. I can't watch it. <laughs> but Chris Jericho just attacked Cody Rhodes. Oh. Um, yeah, after I think he beat Sammy Guar- Guarva, Guarva, and uh, oh, Codebreaker, and there goes Cody West. Anyway, so yeah, that's what I do. <laughs> I produce wrestling shows, and I, I get to. I'm privileged. I'm other than that, I'm a nobody. Uh, I'm. I don't think I'm bigger than I am. I have no shoes. I'm just privileged to do stuff. And now I get to call a couple wrestling shows in Everett here, at local shows in Washington. Because of this, I imagine because Ben. I mean, you know, he was like, yo. The Stooges asked me, and I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> like, that was it. I didn't follow up, but I was like, I, I better just keep doing, keep my mouth shut and do my thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So, like, I get to hang out with a lot of cool people is what it is. It's really yeah. my, is my, the whole thing to sum that up. Right. Awesome. Cool story. All right, What's back to Ayatera? Ayatera. Oh. Let's get back to Ayatera. Uh, let's get back to okay. Ayatera, okay? So, Ayatera, great album. All around, top to bottom. I thought it came in really good. Uh, you know, full circle itself is it's it comes full circle, and there's a lot of uh, featured artists on there with New Kingston, Idol vibes. Uh, but I'd like to hear what you guys think. What do you guys think of this album? That's excellent. Let you go. I wish Greg was here. Um, I hate to say it, but they sound like a your run of the mill local reggae band. Really. Uh-huh. Yeah, reggae, just a, another reggae bar band. Interesting. I, I, yeah. Which I enjoy, trust me. I'm out there, I'm out there at the clubs all the time, and uh, yeah, I, I'm, on the, I'm on the dance floor, so. But it's, there are no studio poles. Well, I mean, I will say that they are playing big amphitheaters and Red Rocks and stuff like that. They're turning around, they're, they're, they've got a big following, so uh, I would contest that they're not definitely a bar band anymore. Um, <laughs> But uh, I can definitely appreciate where you're coming from, especially if you're out of the bars and you're just hearing like uh, a multitude of lots of different reggae music. Well, that and their steel pulse or legends, you know, right. if you're going to put one album against another. Um, and I haven't heard a lot of newer reggae bands that I felt have really stayed true to the root sound. Well, I mean, what do you think them as if you're not comparing them to Steel Pulse? And what do you think of them as a band itself? Oh, they're good. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I'm, I'm, it's not like I'll never listen to this album again. Right. I, right. Right. I enjoyed the hell out of it. But right. uh, if it's album versus album, there's no contest. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Fair, fair point. I actually like this one. I actually like this one a little bit more than the Steel Pulse. Interesting. Wow. Hmm. Only because they added a little bit more. They had the guitar solos. They they made it go out of the reggae style. You know what I'm saying? They didn't stick to like still pulses. You know that's reggae. They mixed uh, Ayatara mixed reggae with some. Well, I guess kind of like uh, Spanish maybe guitars like Santana. Like when I hear those guitar solos, I think Santana, and it fits perfectly in, in with this this. Uh, it's that music. SoCal vibe, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and no, I... I really liked it. I agree. Like I, I, that's why I really like this album too. There's like a lot of bangers on it for me. Like that, I just get pumped listening to just because like the beats and the guitar and like then the, the piano comes in and then you hear him singing and then like you know you're like yeah I do want to be positive. Fuck yeah, <laughs> let's do it. You know what I mean? That's yeah, just me exactly. personally though. What yeah. I mean? All right. I like it because right. it, it's it, you know it's it's got its laid back parts and then it like jumps and and, and moves into something different. And then it'll go back down to like the laid back stuff. But you know, that's I like that. I like when things aren't always the same. I like give me something, you know, to listen to, you know what I'm saying? Give me a reason yeah. to have to hear that song. Why yeah. what am I waiting for? You know, in the chorus or whatever, you know? Right. No, I, like, I, I said, like I said, Matthew, I'm fifty. You know, I've I've dug this shit for thirty eight years now. So I'm gonna come off like an elitist when I say shit like I said. But it's probably because I'm an elitist. Probably, but yeah, there you are. But uh, I love that I love in songs. Good, nice it up's cool. Bless up is cool. Full circle, stand strong. Stand strong sound familiar. It's, I, might, I might have heard that once before. Stand strong, stand strong. Whoa. Anyway, it's a good song. 
Yeah, uh, <laughs> I just got a text from Greg. Doesn't look like his uh, laptop's going to be working with the Skype laptop. Now. Is over, over, over. <laughs> <laughs> that must be some good shit you got over there, huh? I was on uh, a dab city, right? So <laughs> it's uh, some blackberry creme brulee, is what it's called. Oh wow, that sounds good. It's delicious. I don't, I don't smoke, but that sounds great. Well, <laughs> it makes, kind of makes me want to pick it up. I know. I feel like going to the cheesecake factory. All I did was say I was dabbing and eating some blackberry creme brulee. That's it. That's it. <laughs> You're a chef too. He's a podcaster, a videographer, a chef. Yeah, you know, uh, I went to the store and I bought some pepper, some seasoned salt. <laughs> I don't uh, think you put else, any some of that in the some, some oregano? A little, little bit of the bubbly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what are we giving Steel Pulse? One out of uh, one through ten. A zero through ten, actually. <laughs> Oof. Um, I got to give Steel Pulse an 8.5. Holy shit. 8.5. Fuck. That's a lot of points. What about you, Saxon? I'm going nine. Nine? Oh, my God. I feel sorry. Fucking classic. I had to give this one. Well, I'm going to give it one more point. I gave it a six. I gave it a, originally, I gave it a five. Wow. But I'm going to give it a six. Wow. That's low. It is low. But it's not a bad low. Like, I do like half of the album. But... I with the thing I don't like about it is the sameness. If they okay. mixed it up a little bit more, I would have gave it a seven. All right. If you listen to more reggae, you'll get a more keen ear for nuance. I'll try, man. I tried That's to true. do. I tried to do it, man. Next time, maybe I listen to something else, man. All right. <laughs> I had a whole I'll thing, do that. But it was whole beginning of the show. That. I totally forgot to do it. All right. What about Ayatara? What are we giving him, them? Hmm. All right, I'm going to give him an eight. I'm giving him an eight. Really? Yeah, I like them a lot more. I'll let Matt have the deciding vote. I'm going to give him a six. Wow. This is tough. Man. I'm, I'm going to give them an eight. All right. Steel Pulse by a nose. But Steel Pulse, they got, they got, I mean, for, they're just the best. I can't, I can't put anybody above them. <laughs> well, that's good. Well, like, I'm the glad... only person close is Bob Marley, but that's a different story because, like, I consider Bob himself like a visionary and an artist versus Steel Pulse collectively as a band. So I think it's a different argument. Yeah. How long was Bob Just Marley to... around for? He uh, died in 81. Yeah. Yeah, but how many like eight, albums? Eight did he seventh, nineteen eighty one. How many albums um, did he put out? Six, with six, the seven. Wailers, he made three, and with uh, or without the with 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 Bunny and and Tosh, he made three, and then after Bunny and Tosh left, yeah, there was probably four or five after that. He died from cancer, right? Yeah. Sad, sad, sad. All right, what's going on? Anything exciting? Me? Yeah. Well, apparently, uh, <laughs> Adam Rivera figured out how to stream both <laughs> stuff. <laughs> and it's uh, this thing is popping, dude. There's a really? shit little people on Twitch. It's crazy. Awesome. Um, so I'm like, wow, that's record numbers. Uh, anyway. <laughs> that's all you got to do from now on. Just put the uh, <laughs> <laughs> that show up in every show. So we get a season to assist, right? Yeah, right. Very cool. Well, I appreciate you coming on. I'm, I'm glad we finally got to all, you know, meet. I wish Greg was still here, but uh, his computer sucks. So what what the gonna... hell, Greg? You know, I didn't even get to know you. I didn't even get to get to ask you questions. Do you listen? Do you watch Rick and Morty? What's your favorite Coca-Cola he, drink? He Have actually you ever done <laughs> cocaine while riding a horse in the middle of the Amazon? I need to know these questions, he, guys. He, he actually might have. <laughs> he likes. He loves reggae too, so it he lo- would have yeah. been good to have fun. And he also <laughs> loves uh, South Park too, so you would have really got along with him. Man. And he loves Rick and Morty. I'm a huge South Park nerd myself. Like, well, I'll have to hook you up. 
Like, until if you guys around. ever know anybody that can get me onto the show South Park, this is how I end every interview with every interaction. If you ever come across <laughs> anything you can get that you know works for South Park, help me. <laughs> if I ever hear of anybody, I'll let them know. Oh, life to appear on an episode of South Park. I would love for them to make fun of me, kill me off. I don't care. I just want to be enshrined in an episode of South Park. <laughs> Weren't you already on South Park? Didn't you like, sell your pubes to Cartman? That time? not me. It was there. Oh, it wasn't you? <laughs> uh, all right. Well, I really appreciate you coming on, Matt. That stupid little kid or that Love guy him. who won the fucking contest back in the day from season four, and he gets to be in that episode of South Park and enshrined. I want to be that guy. Oh, yeah, I remember about that. Damn. Well, maybe you'll have another chance. You never know. You can, but you gotta like pay now. They make you do the whole really whole like you know uh, uh, awareness charity. You enter the raffle. You know what I mean? Like you pay to be part of the raffle, and then if oh. you win the raffle or the silent auction or whatever it is, then you get to be on the show. So it's a scam. I'm not uh. saying I want to be on an episode of South Park, so I'm not. I'm not. I will not vote South Park down in any way. They probably <laughs> they probably have nothing to do with it. To be quite honest, it's probably just you know there are other people doing it. Yeah. Oh well. Well, go enjoy your AEW. Actually, I'm going to be doing an AEW show myself with uh, Harry Barnett. I don't know if you know who Harry Barnett is, do you? I have no. He's, idea. He used to run. Um. Uh, uh. What the hell is it? Kenny Bowen. He used to run his podcast. You know that fat bastard. Oh. Okay. Kenny Bowen. A grumpy old guy. guy. I only knew about him until like I heard about the Vince Russo stuff. Otherwise, like yeah, I had no yeah, idea yeah. Who he was before that. Yeah. Um, uh, I guess he trained John Cena. That's what he's famous for, right? And <laughs> yeah, basically, that's about it. <laughs> or did we manage John Cena? He didn't he, train him. Oh, he managed him, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I didn't know that. John said it up here. I should probably hey, watch before it. we go, uh, before we go, what's uh, what's Fozzy up to these days? Yeah. Yeah, I yeah. mean, I th- I think they just played a show at the Staples Center with Iron Maiden. Yeah, oh. they did. Yep. Yeah, yeah, they're still they're around. on Iron Maiden tour right now with them. Like the All US right. tour. So, yeah. As you yeah. brought up Chris Jericho earlier. So. Yeah, because he's on AEW right now. He's on wrestling. There's a new wrestling thing on tonight. It's a, it's, it's a big, huge thing. It's a big, huge thing, guy. Everybody's fucking talking about it, except for you, Saxon. I'm still I'm still in Doink the Clown's corner. <laughs> Doink Me the Clown. Too. Which one though? Oh, is there more than one Doink the Clown? <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. There was a couple. <laughs> oh shit. Yeah, yeah, no idea. yeah, a lot of different ones. I probably did coke with the guy back in the day. Yeah, you wanna tell Matt one of those stories? <laughs> tell one of those stories. I like a, I like yeah. a Uncle Saxon story. Oh well. <laughs> <that's> <laughs> a story. It did didn't I already tell this story? No, we did it uh, secretly. Oh, okay. Make sure you yeah, don't right. the year uh, was, uh, spoil too much. The year was 1987. Yeah, okay, I won't. I, I won't uh, name drop. Well, because we have uh, another show with Andrew Bello, so we gotta keep uh, we got to keep some more wrestling stories on. Oh. I'm just going to save it for him. Fuck Bello! Go AEW! <laughs> You're going to have to watch uh, watch our next episode. Oh yeah, Jack I thought you had a couple corner. wrestling stories. Hey, this, a couple... this is an AVA. It's not a, it's not an Uncle Saxon. He can jack himself off in no corner for all I care. <laughs> <laughs> and if he does, Wayne's recording it. Uh, Wayne's right. recording it. Yeah, we haven't ended the show yet, so this is all gonna air. Bell is, Bell is the kind of guy that would put a mirror up and then he would watch himself beat it to himself. You know, that's that's how <laughs> self-involved he is. Bello, 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 Bello! No <laughs> AEW, you're going down, Bello. Oh, shit. We'll see about that. All right. <laughs> All right. Thanks again, Matt, for coming on. Yeah, man. That was cool. It was right, really guys. cool. It was fun talking to you, and I really appreciate everything that you did for us while we were at sponsors and get whatever bug is in your ear out. <laughs> What the hell are you doing? Oh, my ear itches after wearing these headphones. Oh, yeah. Mine does, too, all the time. All right. Again, thank you very much for everything you guys done. We'll be back, maybe, at some point. We'll see. Yeah. You can do whatever you want. You know? <laughs> like, I'm not a pressure kind of guy. You know? I'm just like, okay, cool. Like, I don't even have a sponsor for next month yet. I have to, like, probably look for one. But, like, you know. <laughs> well, you... Oh, wait. You got the Brent Logan, though. No? He's doing this sponsor right now for October. I'm just saying for November. Okay. 
Hey. No, Brian have to start like looking for another sponsor, or somebody needs to start looking for another sponsor. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, you got like uh, you know, a group of like twenty something people over there, so I think somebody would do some work beside you. Um, you know, I think a lot of people do a lot of work. <laughs> I don't know, Matt. It sounds like you're like the you run the whole show over there. Don't say that. I don't do that. Oh, I, I might have to put it a word in. No, I didn't do anything. I did nothing. <laughs> don't get me in trouble. I didn't take shit. <laughs> All right, get out of here before you get in trouble. <laughs> shit up and get me in trouble. <laughs> no, I would never do that. All right. All right, guys. All right. Adios. Thanks again. Adios, Adios, everybody. See you guys next week. Ratsoundreview.com. Go to Hameen Media Group. HackerHameen.Podbean.com. Check us out at Hameen Media Group on Twitter at Hameen Media IG on Instagram at Hameen Media Discussion Group on Facebook. And you can check out the Money Wednesday Night Friday Rock on Eddie Friday. That's right. See you then. Stay Irene. Yeah, man. Yeah. Boop, boop, boop. <laughs> <laughs> that, that. <laughs>